Welcome everyone. In the previous lecture, I was talking to you about the about information structures in stochastic control and I we I mentioned that the kind of problems we have considered so far all involved what we call classical information structure. Classical information structure is one where the information known in the past is, is, inf is also available to us in the future. So, this is our definition of classical information structure and, a, and this is what we have studied so far and any information structure which is not classical it is, is called non-classical. And what I argued then was that if you wanted to really uh, come in a holistic manner study the design of uh, the optimal design of any any system in which there is there is some amount either either a amount of some kind of decentralization involved either 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 something is either data is to be stored across time or it has to be transmitted across space in either of these cases there is there there will be the issue of noise in the communication medium and as a result one has to one has to basically confront that the problem will end up having a non classical information structure either the problem has a non classical information structure in the uh, in in inbuilt in the control actions itself that means the sensing and the uh, and the and the decision making uh, blocks or if you decide that you were going to have another uh, a way for uh, for countering the noise in the medium by introducing a transmitter and a receiver that is going to do some kind of encoding decoding to take care of the noise well then that all then those transmitters and receivers have non classical information structure and they need to be incorporated uh, in the uh, in your in your design problem because the optimal design then is uh, involves a joint design of all of these right of course we have not yet shown uh, that the optimal the optimal design is uh, that the joint design is better than a separate design this is something that we will uh, this is an issue we will come to in today's lecture now today's lecture is 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 about uh, as i had mentioned in the previous class about a, a, a historic paper in the in in the control and decision and control community it's a paper by witzenhausen so i'll just show you a glance of this paper here this paper is called a counter example in stochastic optimum control the author is hans witzenhausen it was published in 1968 in the siam journal of control and if you read the abstract let's we can go through it for a moment it is sometimes conjectured that nothing is to be gained by using nonlinear controllers when the objective is to minimize the expectation of a quadratic criterion for a linear system subject to gaussian noise and with unconstrained control variables in fact this statement has only been established for the case where all control variables are generated by a single station which has perfect memory without this qualification this conjecture is false okay so this is what witzenhausen basically showed in this paper so he showed that if if you do not have if you have any kind of decentralization in the problem then the con your the the linearity of your optimal controllers fails so what is this linearity that witzenhausen is talking about we had talked about this uh, a few lectures ago uh, remember that in in a in a linear quadratic gaussian problem the optimal control takes the form of a superposition where you apply the same controller that you would apply in the absence of noise but you apply it on the conditional expectation of the state given the information the, and the conditional expectation of the state given the information is to be computed recursively from a filter now when the noise in in when the observation noise and the system noise is gaussian this this the conditional expectation of uh, of the state given the information is also linear in the information so consequently the optimal action then if you view it as a function of the information the, uh, the optimal action then is also linear so what witzenhausen shows in this paper is is that well there is uh, that the, this 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 result that the optimal action is is a linear function of the information this this result is contingent on an assumption of classical information structure so if your information structure is not classical then this result fails 
Now this uh, if you, let us read we can see what he is trying to say about this in the introduction. He says in, in a stochastic control problem control actions have to be uh, uh, taken at various instants in time as, as a function of the data then available. One seeks functions for which uh, the expected value of the cost under given noise distributions is minimized. It is usually assumed that all actions uh, to be taken at a given time are based on the same data and that any data available at time t will be available at any later time t dash greater than t. This situation is the classical information pattern. Remember this is something we have talked about. We have said that i k is a subset of i, I k plus 1 right? uh, and that is the classical information pattern. Considering the in particular unconstrained control of linear systems with Gaussian noise and quadratic criteria, it is well known that the search for an optimum can safely be confined to the class of affine which is linear plus constant functions. Right? This is also something we have seen. This is the case for both discrete and continuous time systems with classical information pattern. In this course we have not looked at continuous time systems but the result is true in those systems as well. In this paper it is shown that the class of affine functions is not always adequate when the information pattern is not classical. So when the information pattern ceases to be classical there will be problems in which nonlinear uh, controllers will outperform the uh, outperform all affine or linear controllers. A counter example is presented for which it is established that an optimal design exists and that no affine design is optimal. Thus, there does not appear to be a, there does not appear to exist any counter example involving fewer variables than the one presented here. The practical importance of non classical patterns is discussed. So, so, this is something this is what he says in this paper. So, he shows this paper basically presents to us is the simplest uh, you can say counter example uh, to, to, the, to the belief of the time that linear controllers are optimal whenever there is a linear cost involved, uh, linear system and a quadratic cost and Gaussian and Gaussian noise involved. So, we, we will we what we will do in the coming few lectures is we will study this counter example and we will understand in, in, in depth what is it that this counter example is teaching us. So, what is the what is the counter example? So, maybe let us we can start right I will start writing this out here. The counter, so, uh, the Wittsenhausen's counter example is the following. So, So, the counter example comprises of a simple scalar linear system. So, the state, so you have a scalar linear system. The state of the system uh, to at the initial instant is, is x0 here, x0 is the state of the of the system at time at time 0, let us just draw it in a box here x0. Now, uh, the there is a first controller that acts on it use but he he gets observations equal to y0 the obs, he gets an observation observation y0 okay now he uh, based on this observation this controller acts and produces an action u1 so u1 is the action produced by the, uh, by by this controller now the the uh, the action u1 changes the state and changes it to a new state x1 i will explain what how x1 is derived from u1 but it changes the state to a, a new state x1 then x1 gets corrupted by noise here let me add a noise block here noise x1 gets corrupted by noise so this uh, this is this noise is denoted v. So you add a no, this noise gets added on it. X, so so what comes out of this block is x1 plus v. 
thanks to this noise what comes out of the block is x1 plus v. This here is your second observation. So, this is the observation y1, y1 is x1 plus v. And now based on this observation this there is a second controller that acts, it takes an action u2. The state then changes to x2 which is equal to x1 minus u2. I have drawn all of this in this sequence. Of course, one can draw this in a, in a slightly different way as well. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, the the here the observation out here, which is x1 plus v, has been written in the same sequence here because I want u2 to be acting on x1 plus v. But uh, but really, uh, so u2 is is a function of x1 plus v. But u2 actually manipulates the state itself. So so x1 is changed to x1 minus u2. Uh, and that becomes the new state once you act, once you add u2. So, let me summarize this here. So, we have an initial, initial state x0, then you have the state equations are like this, you have x1 equal to u0, x0 plus u1 and x2 equal to x1 minus u2 this these are this is the these are the state equations the observations that we get are these you have the observation equations these are the observations y0 equal to x0 and y1 equal to x1 plus v the now the important thing here is so we need to choose these the, the decision for us that we need to make is uh, is that is to is that we have to choose u1 and u2 and u1 and u2 are to be chosen to minimize the following cost so the cost function that we have is is denoted as k square u1 square plus x2 x2 square so this is the expectation of this is the cost that we want to minimize now the key, the main thing here uh, that we need to uh, observe is that is the assumption that we have on the information structure so the the classical information structure would have been would have been that uh, uh, would have been where you have the the information the information at at any time k comprises of all the observations up until that time and all the actions that you have uh, that you have taken up until that time. So, uh, right this this was our notion of the inf of the classical information pattern. So, I will uh, what we will yeah, I will not confuse you by writing out the classical information pattern here, but we will just re remember this. So, what we, we are, what we will now do is look at the the information pattern of this particular problem. So, what we will now do is look at the information pattern of this problem. So, the information that is assumed here, we assume that when we are taking action u1, the information that we have i1, let us call that i1, i1 is simply the observation y0. So, we have only the information of y0 at that time. And what is y0? Well, remember y0 is simply x0, right? This is y0 is equal to x0. Now, when we take the uh, the uh, the is the second action that is u2, the information that we have i2 is only y1. And what is that? That is equal to x1 plus this this way this this term simply x1 plus v and y0 here is simply x0. Now, what you notice here is that this is not a classical information pattern and why is it not classical? It is not classical because I I 2 does not contain I 1, I 1 is not a subset of I 2. Right? So, this is 
a not a classical information pattern. So, this is a non classical information information pattern or structure. What about the other things in the problem? Well, the other things in the problem uh, I forgot to mention here the we, are, we are going to assume that uh, the x 0 and v these we will assume are Gaussian, Gaussian and independent So, with this assumption then this now looks like on the face of it looks like a linear quadratic problem right. So, if you see the, the state evolves linearly here, the observations are linear functions, the noise is Gaussian and the initial state is also Gaussian. Now, what about the cost? Well, the cost is quadratic because you see the cost here is uh, is separable uh, in the sense that you have a state you have the state this is the stage wise cost of stage 1, this is the stage wise cost of stage 2. The stage wise cost of stage 1 does not even involve x 1 square that is ok. The stage wise cost of stage 2 does not involve u 2 uh, does not involve u 2 so that is also ok. But this is eventually what is this? This is some kind of a quadratic cost that we are trying to minimize by choosing controllers for when the system state is evolving linearly the observations that we are getting are linear and the noise in the system is Gaussian. The only difference from the from the problem the linear quadratic Gaussian problems we have st studied so far is this information structure. The information structure here is that I, I 1 only knows x 0 and I 2 knows x 1 plus v, x 1 plus v is his observation y 1 and importantly I 2 does not know x 0 right. So, I 2 does not know x 0. So, with this now that we have absorbed this particular problem let us now try to get a understand what is it that uh, what is it that this problem uh, is, is, is telling us or what how, how do we kind of understand what uh, what is going on in this problem. So, what we want to do here remember in this is since this is a stochastic control problem we want to find a policy right. So, we want to find find a policy and uh, so what we will do is we will denote this policy by gamma 1 gamma 2. This is the policy that we want to find and what is what does it mean to find this policy? This basically means you want to find gamma 1 gamma 2 such that u 1 is equal to gamma 1 of of y 0 and u 2 is equal to gamma 2 of y 1. So, the uh, this is so uh, such that we minimize this minimize the cost this is expectation of k square u 1 square plus x 2 the whole square you want to minimize this with respect to gamma 1 gamma 2 right ok. So, first let us try to understand uh, before we uh, move forward let us try to first understand what is this what is actually you know the underlying tension in this problem. So, the underlying if you if you see here the if you look at the cost that we have here the cost is k square u 1 square plus x 2 the whole square right and what is x 2 remember x 2 is simply x 1 minus u 2 right x 2 is equal to x 1 minus u 2. If x 2 is x 1 minus u 2 then what is then what is uh, what is this particular term here? Well, it is expectation of this expectation of x 2 square is equal to expectation of x 1 minus u 2 the whole square. Now, remember u 2 is being chosen as a function of y 1 which means that this term is sort of like is akin is similar to the mean square estimate minimum mean square estimation square 
estimate of x1 given given y1 right so it is so using the information of in present in y1 you want to estimate x1 the you want to get the best estimate um, or you want to basically get the best estimate of x1 that's that's what this second stage seems to be about right so in fact that is exactly what this second stage is attempting to do so if i write out this cost here let me write this out in the following way so let me write this cost as minimize in two in two stages so i have gamma 1 outside so i i do a minimization over gamma 1 outside and then i do a minimization over inside i have a minimization over gamma 2 so i'm first doing a minimization with respect to gamma 2 then with respect to gamma 1 and the minimization inside with respect to gamma 2 is done keeping gamma 1 outside fixed right so the inner minimization here is the minimization with respect to gamma 2 of the expectation of k square u1 square plus x2 the whole square right okay so now if you see here the in this in this expectation uh, the inside this expectation here the, since you are keeping gamma 1 fixed u1 square is the one that is influenced by gamma 1 right u1 square gets influenced by gamma 1 so but it does not get influenced by gamma 2 so when you have fixed a gamma 1 as far as this minimization is concerned u1 square is a constant with respect to gamma 2 so u1 square really moves it, can, it moves out and i can write this as a minimization outside with respect to gamma 1 and then i have expectation of k square u1 square plus minimization with respect to gamma 2 of expectation of minimize the expectation of x2 the whole square right so so now let's let's try to plug in this x2 as x1 minus u2 so in fact let me just erase this and write that here so i, I plug in x2 as x1 minus u2 so i have x1 minus u2 the whole the expectation of x1 minus u2 the whole square and then outside i have a minimization over gamma 1 so if i fix a gamma 1 then what i am really doing in this in this in my second stage out here in this second stage is is estimating estimating x1 from whatever information is is there for me to uh, in order to choose u2 right so if i if i if since u2 is being chosen as a function of y1 so this is basically estimating x1 from x1 from y1 right so we actually know what the optimal estimate here is so the in fact the uh, the optimal gamma 2 then the gamma 2 star is of of gamma 2 star of y1 is in fact we know is should be a conditional expectation of x1 given y1 is conditional expectation of x1 given y1 this is gamma 2 star what we are doing in stage 2 when we are taking the, se the second action is we are really we are just estimating x1 given the information that we have the and the information is y1 right now what the the, uh, the so so this sounds very much like what we have been doing in our in stochastic in lqg problems so far we have we have to estimate the state given the information so this does not sound eerie at all the the only trouble is that you, what you realize is if you look at this particular expression there's something strange which has happened here see notice that x1 here x1 the the uh, the 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 uh, the expectation uh, here you are taking the expectation of x1 x1 the state x1 is in fact obtained from uh, from the initial state x0 
So, how do where does x 1 come from? Remember x 1 is actually coming from x 1 is x 0 plus u 1 and u 1 is gamma u 1 here is gamma gamma 1 of y 0 right. So, this here this the expect this x 1 here is actually not uh, is is in fact we write it here. this x x 1 is a function of gamma 1. So, it is x 1 is is uh, is decided once you decide gamma 1 right. So, one once you fix the function gamma 1 then x 1 gets defined because once you fix gamma 1 you have your u 1 gets defined and from u 1 your x 1 gets defined. So, there is inf implicit here a presence of gamma 1 right. So, that is one thing the but this also happens in all LQG problems this is not a, a new thing uh, this also the pre the past control policies will influence the future state. But the thing that is unique about this problem is that the past control policy not only up appears here in, in x 1, but it also appears here that the, the y 1 which is what is y 1 y 1 was simply y 1 is x 1 plus v remember. So, hidden here also is gamma 1. So, this is also a function of gamma 1. Now, this here is something that does not happen in a usual control problem and that is something that I will explain to you in the next class that the, the this, this is the additional complexity that is coming because of the information structure of the problem that there is that the uh, the the uh, the uh, the presence of of the previous steps policy is all is appearing in the in is appearing also in the in our in the optimization of of the next step so we will discuss this more in the next class